They never said winning was easy. Some people can't handle success. I can. <laughs> I know what it comes with. Some people can't handle it. I can. They will try to close the door on you. Just open it. <laughs> Just open it. <laughs> we don't see them. We will never stop. Beautiful day. Every chance I get, I water the plants. Lion. What is up, everybody? This is Brandon Sav back with another video. And today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a Snapchat filter just like DJ Khaled. So I already preloaded a few images that I wanted to use for the filter. We're definitely going to be adding more throughout the tutorial, but this is a great starting point. So one of the first things that we have to do is make these images into vectors. I found these images on the internet and uh, they're actually JPEG. So if you're not familiar with what that means, uh, most of the time that means that these images have background to them. And when you switch an image to a vector, you're able to manipulate it basically any way that you want. So let me show you an example of that. So for Snapchat, you're obviously using this filter to post over a photo or a video that you're recording. So it's important that you don't have an image with a white background on it. So as you can see, these images that I posted, when I throw them on top of this image, it, it sort of takes away from the filter part. If I was to add more images, you wouldn't see what's going on. So there's multiple ways to actually edit the white background out. If you watch my tutorial, my first video actually, of how to remove a background, you can tell in Photoshop, there's, diff there's several different ways to do it. But since we're in Illustrator, it's much different. We're working with vectors. So here's how to make this JPEG into a vector. And you can use this with any logos or anything. So this is basically how to make a JPEG into a vector. So once you select your photo, you'll notice that there are options that appear at the top of your toolbar. So within those options, you'll notice that there's a button that says image trace. So once you select that, you'll notice that the image will turn black. So be aware that sometimes this method that I'm about to show you guys doesn't work with every image. So Sometimes you might have to go another route. So once you've selected image trace at the top, what you wanna do is you wanna find an option menu that should be on your right side. However, if you don't see it, head to the top where it says window and then select image trace and it should pop up in front of you. Okay, so as I mentioned before, every image is different and this method might not work on every image. So what I'm doing now is I'm messing with the settings. Make sure you press the arrow that says advanced, the little drop down arrow. Make sure you press that and just play around till it's the settings that you want. Each setting does a different thing to the picture. If you hover over them for a minute, it shows you and it explains to you what each setting does to the photo. One important thing to mention is where it says method here, I'm gonna make sure that I select overlapping and I'll show you why in a second. Okay, so I found my perfect setting. So once you find the perfect setting, you wanna head back to the top toolbar and then you're gonna see it expand. You wanna select that button. So now that you press expand, your main job now is to delete any excess white areas that this image may have. Now something weird happened. So I tried to delete one of these white dots at the bottom of the shoe, but it actually ended up disappearing and just leaving a solid black color. So to fix that, here's what you have to do. You wanna select the entire object. So in this case, I will be selecting the whole Yeezy shoe. So you wanna find the option 
Pathfinder. So once again, it may be on your right side, but if not, head up to the top and select Pathfinder. So once you select Pathfinder, there are a few options that pop up. The option that we're looking for is Divide. And Divide is found in the second row under Pathfinders. It's actually the first icon that you see. And once selected, this option will allow you to now select these white areas and be able to delete them. So now we deleted all the white areas and we're finished. Now this image is a vector file. So now if I wanted to make this whole thing green, I can make the shoe green. So now my next step, I actually had another image of a Yeezy that I wanted to trace. So I'm gonna be repeating the same steps that I did with this previous one with this one. So as I was trying to find a placement for these shoes, I realized that Snapchat has a strict, strict guideline for what you can actually upload because we don't own or have the rights to these uh, Yeezys, I guess you could say. So I decided to go with a different design choice. So I'm gonna fast forward to that. So one of the main features I wanted this Snapchat filter to have is arced text. So once I decided that I'm making this for an 18 year old, that's what I did with each of the, the texts I arced the font. So once you have the proper sizing to arc the font, you head to the top, go to effects, warp, then arc. Since Snapchat won't allow us to use the Yeezy shoe, one dope concept that I came with was to stack sneaker boxes up like a sneaker head. When you're trying to make filters like DJ Khaled, one main thing you have to do is you have to put the strokes up a lot. I don't know what this does, but it sort of gives it a cartoon feel. So what I did first was select the first shoe box. I double clicked it. 
and then I selected draw inside. And you can find this option to the left or bottom of your toolbar. After that, I actually drew a rectangle inside the box and lowered the opacity to about five. Now the detailing on these shoes have to be on point. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually adding shadows to these boxes to make it give it a little more like a cartoon feel and, and just add more detail. I want to make sure that these shoes have as much detail as possible. This sets your filter apart from others when you add more detail. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually using a pen tool. So what you want to do is you want to click both ends. So I'm clicking at the top, the middle of the top of the rectangle and the bottom corner. So once you click, you hold your last click and drag down. And then I just close the, the shape. With all this detailing, you want to make sure that the opacity is really low so that you see it or notice it rather, but it's not it's not taking over your art. So I found images of different sneaker boxes like Jordans and, and other boxes. So the second box, I'm actually gonna make it to a Jordan shoe box. So the base color of the box is a gray. It's like a light, light gray, and it has Jordan's elephant print in it. So I'm actually gonna repeat the same process that I did earlier in this tutorial to make a vector file with this image that I found of the elephant print. So for these next shoe boxes, I'm basically repeating these same steps. I'm changing the color and I'm adding shadows to the boxes.
So that's it for this video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And let's get this video to a thousand likes and we'll continue to push out content. And in the next tutorial, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to actually upload this filter and get it live on the Snapchat. So stay tuned for that.